Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Chris Weidman. Uh, thanks for checking out my channel and the latest episode of my podcast, Won't Back Down. Uh, before we get to today's guest, I just want to give a shout out to my presenting sponsor, BioAccelerator. BioAccelerator is the world leader in stem cell therapy and regenerative medical research. Through the use of their powerful golden stem cells, they help patients heal from joint and orthopedic injuries, autoimmune disorders, spine and disc damage, and neurological trauma. I'm going down to Columbia uh, the end of August to get my stem cell treatment from BioAccelerator. I'm super excited. Um, one of my boys, Crispy Avila, just went down there and he is just saying that he feels so much better and healing better than he's had in years. Um, and so I'm excited to see what they could do for me, my leg and the rest of my body. Uh, thanks again to BioAccelerator uh, for helping me create Won't Back Down, which you could also find wherever you get your podcasts. I'm branding DDP Yoga, DDPY mainly because I want people to stop calling it just fucking yoga because it's not, you know? Yeah. It, it, and I love yoga. I love all types of yoga. But first 42 years of my life, Chris, I'm the guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga. Yeah. You know, we made fun of it as kids and stuff. Yeah. And, but then I got enlightened and realized, wow, this shit really works. And it, it helped me come back from an injury that they said was a career ending. Mm. And when you have three different spine specialists tell you you're done and then, okay, I'll try yoga. <laughs> you know? wow. But it wasn't giving me everything. So I mixed it with rehab, old school calisthenics and something I call dynamic resistance, which is time under tension, flexing and engaging as you're moving. And the, it's not just stretching and stretching and strengthening muscles, ligaments and tendons. So you don't get hurt. Not just heal you, but be preventative maintenance so you don't get hurt. Yeah. And uh, all you got to do is look at someone like Tom Brady. Like, he's not doing my program, but everything he's doing is based in the same shit that I do. From the way he eats, to the way he trains, to the story he tells himself. Mm. So when you talk about get rid of the anti-inflammatories for three months, no, get fucking rid of the inflammatories that you want to you want to be the most tightest fighting machine that you can be and again you're 37 you know you're not 27 anymore and the person who gets this at 27 or 23 that fucker is going to be unstoppable for a long time to come and just look at the nba the nba is the best example if you look at those teams there is no way anyone is putting Mo, uh, Milwaukee as the fucking winner of the fucking NBA championship. No yeah. way. Because mm. you still got LeBron and you got fucking those, those, that, that unbelievable trio in freaking, uh, uh, in Brooklyn now. Mm. KD and the boys there, man. I mean, James Harden. I mean, well, Kyrie. I mean, they should have, it should have been them in, L in LA. Yeah, that's what everybody wanted to see. But injuries, injuries. Like, who stays the healthiest? Yeah. I will guarantee you that freaking Tom Brady isn't just working with those guys on the field and in the boardroom with the plans up on the board. He's also teaching them how to live a healthier lifestyle. And some of them will get it, and most of them won't because I'm unstoppable until you're not. You yeah. freaking take that one hit out, in the NFL, you're done. Ninety percent of the time, you're done. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you. So going back to yoga, yoga for me was one of the most humbling things I've ever done. I remember the first time <laughs> I did, I did a Bikram yoga class. I'm sure you've oh, done God. that before. And yeah, I'm in, and, and I'm a professional <laughs> athlete. I'm in the back, and you see all these girls and other guys up front, and they are they're doing all these different movements. And so I'm like, if they're doing it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do everything they're doing. It was really such a humbling experience. And I started doing it. I did it for a couple of years uh, on and off. I started, it, it started just kind of wearing me out during the day because I had two or three other workouts I had to do. And I was doing the Bikram early in the morning. And so I was losing too much water and I wasn't able to hydrate fast enough to, to get back, to get it all back sure. in my system during, for the rest of my workouts. But I learned very quickly to humble myself and don't try to keep up with anybody and just go at my own pace <laughs> right. Um, right. because holy smokes is yoga good. And, and 
it, it does. It really does work on everything that you need to work on as far as strength, flexibility, cardio. It does hit everything. What what is different about DDPY than regular yoga? And I and I did watch I watched Relentless, which I thought was unbelievable. It's amazing what you're doing, inspiring people. It's it's uh, like you know people talk about wanting to inspire people, and then you watch that video, and it's like this is a guy who is intensely every single day waking up and focusing on helping other people. And so I just want to say it really is inspiring to see what you're doing uh, for me. Um, but yeah, can you just tell me the differences with, uh, with what you're doing and what regular yoga brings to the table? I will, but let me just, I want to, I want to cap off what you just said. When I was 22, there was a Bible thumper. I, I've been watching and listening to inspirational talkers forever. And that shit makes up a lot of who I am. And there was a guy named Zig Ziglar and he's old Bible thumper. But this guy has the greatest quotes of all time. And the one that really stuck with me, and it wasn't exactly, he didn't say it exactly like this, but it's pretty close. And I just made it my own. Whatever I hear someone say or do, I'm going to take it and make it my own, just like I did with my DDPY program. Yeah. But he said, you can get whatever you want as long as you help enough people get what they want. And I have found that to be true. And now it's crazy true for everything that I've done and people I've helped. And it's, I'm constantly doing it. Like next week, uh, uh, Chuck Liddell is supposed to be here for a couple of days. I'm waiting to see if he's still going to make it. If he makes that golf <laughs> tournament, then I know he's here because he wants me to be in the golf tournament. In it. And I was like, Chuck, I'm saving golf and heroin for my old age. You know, this is not my game. You know, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't like turning one way all the time. Not good for my back. Yeah. And uh, bottom line is he said he's coming in next week, but he's been doing my program for a while now. Oh, and wow. he wants he, he wants me, he really wants me to come to talk to the veterans. And you can see one of the shirts I'm wearing right now. It says Warrior's Purpose. And that's a program that we put together for veterans. And it's a, it's a pilot program right now, which means we're working on it. Um, but like when you go to my site, ddpy.com or ddpyoga.com, always veterans, not just you know, Memorial Day or whatever, 365 days a year, it's 50% off for mm. military or you know, retired military. And I do that because what those guys give to us. And I've been to Iraq three times, Afghanistan once, to see the troops for 13 days at a time. And I went out to the outside fobs that nobody went to. And I did it on four different occasions. Again, because I, you know, I hate the war, but I love the warrior. Mm. So back over to... Was that USO you know, tour you were doing? Uh, it was actually... Um, God, I can't remember what they called it, but it was a group that contacted me, and they do it all the time. Gotcha. And uh, I did one for... The one tour, I came back from Iraq, it, the, the next tour was going to go to Afghanistan and I wasn't supposed to be on it. Someone dropped off and I literally was home for three days and they asked me to go back if I would. And it was to go to Afghanistan, which I'd never been to before. And I went and it was a great trip. But when I got back, I got so sick. I mean, that was the worst. That was as bad as COVID was to me. Yeah, it might really? have been COVID right. way back then, but it was like 2006 or seven, whenever it was, but it kicked my ass. But back over to what, what makes DDPY different? For starters, I'll always say most yogis are very namaste. DDPY, yeah. way more TNA. Yeah. And in the beginning, I meant TNA. I yeah. had smoking hot women and regular dudes doing this workout. And at some point, women really started to dig it, too. Not like they love yoga, but how they, they, they love this. These are women who mainly don't like yoga. There's a lot of people who just don't like it, and they dig my stuff. And when I say TNA, I mean tone and attitude. For starters, you know, <laughs> where yoga is silent, you know, I've got you taking it up in the touchdown, bringing it down, put your thumb and index fingers together, push them tight, take it back, bring your arms out to a T, clinch your fist, hulk it up, brother. Uh, uh, shoulders back, chest out. Uh, I mean, like, that's just the call. 
Like yeah. that's a call that ends every sequence. And it's an attitude, you know, it's engaging. Like with yoga, you can reach your arms to the heavens and <laughs> smile at the universe all day long doing this. You can't open your fingers wide. When you open your fingers wide, all these muscles engage. And when you take time under tension and create your own resistance, you can't do that all day. That's like lifting weights with no weight. It's time under tension. Now, why did I incorporate that? Why? Because I wanted to figure out how to get a kick-ass cardiovascular workout standing still. Because what this is science. This isn't my, my what I say. This is science. Every time you flex or engage a muscle, your heart has to be faster to get the blood to the muscle. Example, laying down, your heart rate's going to be the lowest it can be. Yep. Sit up, it's going to go up a little bit. Stand up, it's going to go up. Walk, jog, run, sprint. Boom, mm. boom, 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 boom. What are you doing? You're engaging more muscles as you're doing that. I've got you standing with your feet hip distance. Grip your toes. Flex your quads. Flex your glutes. Grab the ball. Create the resistance as you take it into touchdown. That's nothing like yoga. Is it some of the movements? Absolutely. But I've also got rehabilitation techniques dropped into it. I've got old school calisthenics done with a slow burn movement. Like, Chris, you want to really know how strong you are? Don't get on the bench press and tell me what you got there. Get on the ground and do 10 second push ups where you lower 10, 9, 8. And then you get three inches off the ground and you hold 10, 9 until you get to 10, to one. Mm. Then push up 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, all right? That's one 30-second push-up. When I first started, I could only get three. And then I'd lower to my knees for three. My goal was six. Eventually, I got six. And then a while later, I got seven. And then I got eight. And this is all in my 50s, okay, when I really focused on this. Then in my 60s, I said, I'm going to get 10. And I'm going to work at it and work at it and work at it. And I filmed it one day. One day I got it. One day. Mainly because wow. the camera was on, but I got 10. <laughs> it's amazing how that and, can motivate you, though. No, yeah. It's red light yeah. fever. As you know, it's that yeah. adrenaline. Yeah. And I was probably live on freaking some uh, Facebook or something. And then I added something that is, uh, let me just get it right here. I added something. That have you are you familiar with blood flow restriction? Yes, yep, yep. Okay. I actually got one of the machines at my house, and okay, then so uh, it pops up the air with it, and yes, stuff. yeah, yeah, yep. It's like a tourniquet stuff. system, yep, like right. Well, I've, I've been working with these straps here that when they go on, they jack up and you can crank them up. So I always say, jack, jacking them up. And then now we're doing curls, I'm doing back, I'm doing chest. When I'm doing the workout, I jack them up. And then when I'm done with that, I pop them. So I might do eight reps here and eight tricep pushdowns. No weight. The density in my muscle, it flipped me out a little bit because I'm building muscle with no weight. But when I would feel my arm, I'd go like, wow. Because if I'm doing my work at my arms, going to be tight, I'm going to be pumped. But at some point during the day, you're going to lose that blood. Now, if you're weightlifting and you're lifting heavy and you're lifting for strength, you can pretty much keep that pump throughout the day. But I've yeah. never had it doing yoga or even my program until I added these. And then I realized I'm getting stronger. I, I was getting eight, like in the beginning of a workout, eight, 10 second push-ups. That's how I'd start. And again, this isn't for everybody. I start people at three second push-ups, low for three, hold for three. I start people actually staying and playing. Don't go up and go down. So I make it so anyone at any level can do the workout. Just so I can make this clear so people go, man, that workout will kick your ass. My workouts start up in bed. 
my rebuild series, you've got a torn ACL, start working in the bed. Then go to the chair in our chair force workouts. Then use the chair for stability and build strength and balance, et cetera. It goes all the way to psycho extreme shit. My Jack series workouts <laughs> on my 64th birthday, bro, I did 11 and three quarters, 10 second push up. Who the fuck gets stronger at 64? Now, I did something to my shoulder after that, fucking around, climbing up a wall. I knew I should never have done it, but I did it, you know, and I hurt my shoulder. Do you know who that guy Bo, High, Bo Hightower is? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Chiropractor. That uh, fucker physical therapist. is the real, he's the real deal. Really? And I've never, I've got great healers that work with me. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Mm -hmm. That cat came to my house. And what I had was like a tendon that had, when I duck, when I come off the wall and because I had to drop like six feet and my knees dropping six feet, not a good feeling, man. Not good for my knees, period. So I really didn't want to let go of the wall and I screwed my shoulder up. And what had happened is like, I don't know how, but a tendon had flopped over on the other side of that bone. And man, it was getting to where I was losing strength in my right arm. I didn't have a tight bicep. This arm was strong as hell. I'd gotten fitted for a suit. And the guy goes, are you right-handed or left-handed? I said, right. He goes, how is your right smaller than your left? I go, well, I fucked my shoulder up. And yeah. you know, the bottom line is Bo, and you should see him. Now, that's what I'm telling you. Okay. He got in there with that hammer, chisel, and shit. It hurt like hell, but he moved it over where it was supposed to be. Wow. And that was about a month and a half ago. I already feel so much stronger and so much better that now I'm, I was down to like three 10 second push ups, man. I, I, I wouldn't go above that because it hurt too much. Wow. Now I'm back up to five. My goal is to get to 12. Did and he know, did, did 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 he know that your tendon was flopped over your muscle like that, or was that something that he, he figured out by looking at it? Not looking by feeling. Like mm. he's got so no M no MRI, no X-rays or anything, just nothing. Now, I showed him my MRIs, but they couldn't really tell anything from that. He got in there. He does shit like it's not massage work. There's another guy out in, in the UK who does a version of it. It hurts like a son of a bitch. But I know I know how to breathe. So I can breathe through that pain. And I got a pretty, you know, like you, I got a pretty, can't do what we do without having yeah. a pretty high pain yeah. tolerance, you know. But he got in there, man. And what he's doing while he's doing this, he's interviewing you. So his interviews are like, you know, half a million Three million, five million, you know, depending on who he's who he's uh, working with. Uh, but he 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 got in there and he told me what it was. He could feel it. Now he had to get it over. And he gets that big hammer and the chisel out. And as you move, as you're moving, I thought it was a gimmick at first. That cat is onto something. That just chiropractors who get you know become doctors go to him to train with, like. He he's a real deal, man. And yeah. I would suggest after you're healed a while, you know, I would suggest you, you know, I'll give just call me and, and I'll give you his number and uh, hook you up with him. He's a great guy. Um, and he's really got like he's a healer. He's a, he's <laughs> a healer. And it was really amazing. So the bottom line is my program is, is so like if you were a yogi, you'd go, that's not yoga. And that's what I say. Like, I, I do, these, use, do these yogis hate you? You know, they really can't um, because of all the people I've healed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah, know amazing what I mean? success stories. Yep. Yeah. Um, you can't take you know, what I'm doing and whatever he's doing, it works. Mm. And I make it accessible. Like, if you go into a yoga studio, if you weren't an athlete, and you walked into that class and you were, let's just use, you're a beat up old man, you know, or a beat up athlete that's in his fucking thirties or forties. Could you even have done that class? Yeah, no, no, exactly. And that's my point. 
when the disabled veteran Arthur Mormon walked into a yoga studio, they were like, we don't know what to do with you. Mm, that's too much. That's liability. It's too hard. Too much, too for much me, private attention. For me, I make the program work where you are. I can't tell you how many people come up to me, big people, people who are beat up saying, thank you so much for making something accessible that I can do. Now, if I'm teaching a workshop, I'm doing a workshop. There's a hundred, there's been as many as 192 people working out with me at one time. Mm. Now, as you can imagine, there's people using chairs. There's people who are shredded. There's young, there's old. It's, a, it's the most eclectic group of people ever. And I, and I call the workshops inspiration meets perspiration. They're like three hours. And I'm going to inspire them first. And then I'm going to teach them the diamond dozen. And I'm going to break it down and teach them what I call dynamic resistance, which is how to jack your heart rate up, standing still. Of course, these straps take that to a different level because this is all about, as you know, the inclusion of the blood and for anybody who's watching and doesn't know what I'm, what I'm saying there, what I'm saying is if you're a weightlifter and you are on your sixth or seventh rep, if you look at your body, you can tell that's where all the blood is. That's where you get the blood trap. That's where you start tearing down muscle and building muscle. Those last couple of reps. When you use BFR, which I call my DDPY jack straps, when you're using BFR, you only need to use 40% of your maximum load and you will get the same results. Yeah. And when smart athletes realize that, and my, my, my straps are, are you know, they're, they're going to be, eventually when I build this program out, they're going to be every, they're going to be everywhere. And the bottom line is, if you don't have to work, you're going to be working as hard, but not as hard on the joints. Yeah. That's the secret to longevity, especially if you're a football, you know, UFC, you know, MMA, uh, professional wrestler. If your body is all about taking impact and you want to keep your strength and size, well, you don't really want to be wearing down these and these because when these fuckers wear down, that's a real problem. Yeah, you know? I, I think uh, so. I started doing. I, I first saw BFR. I don't know, maybe a year ago. I seen this kid who I follow on Instagram, Robles. He's a, a former NCAA champion. He has one leg, and he was trying to become the. I've seen uh, him. He's trying I've to seen him. win the. He's trying to be, uh, win the Guinness Book World Record for most pull-ups in a twenty-four hour period. So wow. he was using them, you know, I guess to help with that. Mm -hmm. And then, out of everything that was recommended me for physical therapy coming out of this surgery, obviously it was super traumatic and I had lots of different opinions. It was BFR. So I have this right. BFR machine that's at my house now. And because it replicates a one rep max that obviously I wouldn't be able to do a squat or like, you know, leg raises with my leg right. all busted up. I could do a squat, just, just an air squat with this tourniquet system on the blood flow restriction. And it will replicate as if I have 400 pounds on my back. Besides, yep. I'm not loading the joint, which obviously would be bad for me. I do think I think BFR is the future of training of, yep. of uh, 100% strength and conditioning. It's going to be something that I think is going to be in every gym. Um, you could see all the guys who are really into this and on the cutting edge of science getting really involved in BFR. Um, so I think that that's awesome that you you're getting involved with that. You know, with your yoga program. DDP. DDP yeah. Y program. Yeah. I don't want to say yoga and put it in there without <laughs> saying DDP Y. I know right. you get pissed about it, that. It, well, it's not pissed off. It's branding. You know, it's like the WWE. I've done interviews with them when they first changed the WWE from WWF. And I say WWF. And they go, no, WWE. I go, well, it wasn't a WWE back then. It was just it was. Yeah. Because it was their branding. And it looked like the worst thing that happened to them because the, the World Wild, Wildlife Foundation they got the WWF and it was really the best thing ever happened to them. And, and people really need to understand that sometimes the worst thing that happens to you, if you keep your head on straight, if you breathe through it, if you work through the negative 
emotional gravity that everyone goes through, it can be the best thing ever happened to you. And I can prove it with my story over and over and over again. What looked like the worst thing that happened to me when I told my rotator cuff, I was wrestling eight months, nine months. Boom, they let my ass go. I finally got to the show and now you're gone. I had no rep. I was freaking 36 years old. I'm not going to be able to come back till I'm 37. Who's going to believe in that guy? Well, Jake Roberts, because what I had done earlier, and he started to tell, help me in the ring and understand the psychology of wrestling and the storytelling. And when I got back there because of relationships, you know, it's not about who you know or who knows you. It's about who's willing to say they know you. Mm. Who's willing to pick up the phone and go, no, no, give him a break. He's going to outwork everyone. And he, he just might surprise you, you know, right. and you got to get people believing you to, to do that. And for me, it was like one person at a time. And my fans, it was like one person at a time. It took eight years for me to be an overnight sensation in professional wrestling. The crazy part is it took eight years for DDPY to make me a dime. I was $548,000 in my money. Nobody else's mine before I made it done. Jeez. Where did, where did you get that work ethic from and that in, intense belief in yourself? I mean, you started wrestling at 35 and, I, and everyone started getting to know you as a super hardworking guy who was willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Very passionate. Where, did, where, do, you, where do you feel like that came from? I actually know. Uh, and it wasn't one moment. It was a series of moments. And when I was a young kid, I was a really good football player. It was a pretty damn good hockey player. I was playing at 12 years old. I was playing with, a, you know, starting both ways in Pop Warner and playing with the 15 year olds in hockey. And then mm -hmm. I walked out one morning and I got hit by a car and I hit my right knee. My face bounced off the hood and I flew 42 feet from the point of impact. That was in 1968. Jeez. There was no such thing as rehabilitation back then. Now, if you played for the New York Knicks or the or the New York Jets or Giants, yeah, yeah but not to some little kid. And I'm to me, and I, I have no reason not to believe I would have done this because every Chris, every single goal, every fucking single goal I have hit in my life. Now, was it right on spot, right on that? Yeah. Sometimes it was a little bit under it. I was just, you know, right there. Might have been a little to the right, a little to the left. A lot of times I blew right through it. Like, never thought I would be there. But I did. And it goes back to, I was reading at 30 years old in a third grade level. So back then, I mean, me trying to read and get through shit, I cheated my way through school. And listened in class because I couldn't read or write. Yo, know? it looked like yo. Know, if I didn't get kids to write papers for me, do shit, and that shit never would have happened. So you do what you got to do. But what happened to me? My sports was my outlet, which you understand that. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, um, I relate and, right with this. And they wouldn't let me play football or hockey anymore because they were, com you know, they considered combat. I never understood hockey because you were, even though it is very, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of impact, but not on your knees. But yeah. the doctor wouldn't sign off to me. He said, you can play baseball or basketball. Oh, I suck at both of those. And baseball, you know, you got to have someone, you, you got to have at least one person to throw the ball back and forth, yeah. never yeah. mind anything else. But basketball, you don't really need anybody. And I didn't make the team in seventh grade, but I didn't give a shit because football was my game. Eighth Wait, grade, so they I told the you team. you can't play the two sports that you love in right. sixth grade, seventh grade? Yep. In, wow. in, in, yeah, in seventh grade. So Terrible. Uh, I, I, was, I was devastated. I even got my mom because I heard, I don't know how I, how I heard about him, but I heard of Dr. Nicholas, who was the Jets and the New York Knicks, uh, New York Knickerbockers uh, 
doctor. He worked on Willis Reed's knee. He worked on um, Joe Namath's knee. And I was like, Mom, he could probably help me, man. Bring me to him. Bring me to him. And my mom didn't even live with me. She lived up north. I lived with my grandmother. But she came down and got me. We went to New York. Where, where are you living? Nick, Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Down on the shore. Um, and uh, Jersey Shore, that show, that's where I lived, right there. Nice. Um, but uh, he brought me up to see Nicholas, and he was like, listen, you're never going to be Joe Namath. You're never going to be Willis Reed. Hit the books, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, great. So the bottom line is I start, I, I, I made the team in my eighth grade because I was tall in basketball, but I sat yeah. on the bench. And I'd never sat on the bench. And I swear that would never happen to me again. And I went down the park every single day. And I was there until the lights went off. I'd play in the rain. I'd play six, eight plus hours a day, every day. And I went from not getting picked on the team and having to go shoot hoops by myself to finally getting picked to finally picking the teams and being one of the better players on the Jersey Shore. And I realized that work ethic equals results, you know, and inside my Hall of Fame ring, my WWE Hall of Fame ring, inside it inscribed, it says work ethic equals dreams, DDP. And mm. that just became a I mantra to me. Like, you know, like the guys who, who I consider have insane work ethics are guys like um, Triple H, The Rock has a ridiculous. He did a great talk to the LA Lakers. And basically, he said fuck a hundred times, I think. <laughs> But he basically said, you're not going to out fucking work me. Not one of you. You know, because look at him. He's the biggest star in the world now. And he's one of us. He's one of the friggin' boys, you know. Yeah. Batista, too. Killing Cena, too. Oh, yeah. They're all killing it. And I've got a new show coming out on uh, in Netflix. And I'm hoping that I can start to now really work on my acting. I've been doing it for 20 years. But this is my first big break. And the show is called Guardians of Justice. And it's a very dark superhero series that you know you know they have the can film festival well they also have the can international series festival and that is coming up in october and our show is one of the shows that they picked for the can series festival that's wow. a pretty big honor so uh i'm hoping that we can take that momentum on the netflix and that it you know becomes a household name for people who watch Netflix. You know, that's my goal that I hope that that will happen, but you never know, you know, yeah. you never know what's going to happen when you do something like this, it could blow up or it could be nothing. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I think it's, it's going to have such a cult following no matter what, because of all the shit we've thrown into it. And when I say shit, I mean, there's never been a series that's a superhero series like this. That's like a graph, like a live graphic novel at times, like a live action um, video game, uh, anime, claymation. I mean, it's friggin', it's got a lot of shit, man, that I've never seen anywhere. And the story is pretty cool. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Are you putting well. this? To, this is you, you're putting this together, or you're just an actor on the show? I, I'm I am one of the, the leads on the show. But I'm also one of the producing partners, and it's, it's been a it's been a labor of love. It started as something we were just shooting for YouTube, and then at some point, Adi Shankar, who's done a ton of stuff, and he's one of my good friends, and he's one of the, he's the main guy. You know, it's an Adi Shankar experience. Um, they you, YouTube uh, YouTube uh, Netflix was asking what else you got. This is a few years ago, and he talked about you know uh, Guardians of Justice and. They started to look at some of our stuff, and he was now at that point putting it into special effects and BFX and all that stuff that makes the effects look amazing. Uh, and it's a it's it's a Netflix original. It's like it's wow. it's real. You can't have that's the biggest platform in the world. So you know before Apple TV or Hulu or any you know home HBO, I'd rather be on Netflix. Yeah, you know, especially now everything is everything is streaming. 
You know, there's no, no one's watching regular TV anymore. Um, everyone's canceling their cable box, uh, you know, uh, service fees, and they're just doing doing these streaming services. So to get on yeah, Netflix yeah. is pretty big deal. That. Yeah, good for you, man. And, and that's why we started our app. We started our app seven years ago. You know, and now I've got over three and a half million dollars in this app. Wow. And the app was never just about workouts. You know, because workouts are just a, par- a portion of what your wellness is. You got to know what to eat. Like, I just don't tell you what to eat. I cook it for you. Or I, my, what do my daughters do? Or my girl Paige, or y'all you know, bringing some buddies of mine or chef. Like, whatever we're eating that we haven't eaten that's not up on the app, if it's great, we're filming it the next week. Like, that's where people, every, so every Monday night, every Monday on my app is Motivational Monday. And what I'm trying to do is just inspire people to dig down and believe in themselves. And if they've got the program, they took the time to invest in something that has to do with me. Well, I'm believing back in them and trying to make them understand how There's never underestimate the power you give yourself by believing in you. Like right now, all it takes is you to believe that that leg is going to get healed. But you can't rush yourself on an injury like that. You can come back at what level you want to make sure every muscle, the little muscles on out are going to be strong enough to handle the stuff in the beginning that's going to be like, the, the tremor to that to that leg. And the first place they're going to kick you is in that leg. Of course. Because that's the game. Bring it on, yeah. baby. Bring yeah, it on. That's the game. I got metal that's waiting for you. Titanium. <laughs> put you in pain with so, my leg. So every Monday is every Monday's motivational Monday. Every Tuesday's a new workout. I have over 300 different types of DDPY workout that now adding in our Jack's series ddpy jack with bfr goes to a different level because no one has that every wednesday is a new cooking show every thursday is a tip of the week every friday and this is something i want to read this to you let me see if i can find my uh ipad um the um i don't know if it'll come up on this one um it comes down to you know people that's such dead um it's people in a community. And it's the reason why AA works, you know, because there's people in the community helping people change. And what I have created by doing this program, it goes down to the people who do the program and teach the program. And a lot of my instructors, they started this site. It's DDP Yoga, one word. I tell people, don't listen to a word I have to say about my program. Just go on Facebook, DDP Yoga, one word. That's not my site. That's a member site. It was a handful of instructors who started going on that site and were, were reaching out to help people. And now we have over 67,000 people wow. that, wow. Are so act- that are so active. And this is, they're so crazy active. And I say crazy because they're, they're, they're passionate about it. That they are so active that I go on there and I pull up, um, I pull up different, like, I was watching posts. <laughs> I'm on there. I'm right? on there. Yep. I but, got but, the, you know, I got but I'm, the, talking, I'm talking about that on the, on the Facebook page. I'll grab people's posts and I call it Fabulous Friday. And I grab different people's posts of what they say so you can see this person start believing in themselves or they've already gone from this person and this person and they're trying to help you do it as well. Like change can really happen when you have people who are like-minded and I've got 67,000 of them right in this spot. And like I say, they go through so much so fast because there's so many people who are active. I grab whatever posts I see that are amazing. And every Friday, <clears throat> I do like three or four of them and I call them Fabulous Fridays. So there's always something to do 
and there's always some way to be inspired to believe. Yeah, it's funny because one of the things that yoga helps people with is they with their mental state and their spiritual state, they, you know, they do these different yoga forms and then they, you know, they're praying to different gods, I guess is the, I think I'm right with that, right? It was kind of for, that's how it began, right? Each yoga pose yeah. was a different, different thing that focused on a different God. Like, you know, then, I don't know, but I don't know enough about that part. I just know that originally in India, these were the freaking like military, like this was their workout. Oh, wow. It was on, and men, only men were allowed to do it, mm. which is crazy. We didn't expect United that. States, no. Yeah. In the United States, it's a chick thing. <clears throat> you know, yoga pants. But as you know, I can make that the easiest workout you've ever done. And I can make it the hardest thing you ever dreamed possible. And somewhere in, <clears throat> in between is where you want to end up because you don't want it too hard. You know, you want to make it so I can do it, so I can build the strength, so I can grow with it. And that's the beauty of what I do with this program is being able to help people take where they're at and then let's build on it and let's fix it. And let's get that core strength. Like, you see, I've been sitting on this chair the whole time and I can take my face and put it on my forehead or I can take either one of my feet at any time, <laughs> pick it up, put it in your face, pull it over my head, a six foot four, 224 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and 65 years young. Like, I have that core strength. Like, my, a lot of the guys that, that are in my business, they don't have anything like it, you know? And the guys who do it, they do. Is it? Is this usually out of the 67,000 people? Are most people using it once a day, four or five times a week, multiple times a day? What's the usual uh, thing that you guys recommend? Uh, well, I put it like this. It's like if you do it three days a week, it changes. it'll change the way you feel. I guarantee you, you do it four days a week, it'll change your life. You Was it, it five 45 days a minutes week, to an hour usually? Yeah, and well, it's really 25. I start people with 20. Like in the bed workouts, they're 10 minutes. Sitting in the chair, they're 15 minutes and they go to 20 minutes and they just build up to build endurance. I don't want people, I'm constantly telling people, step in, lower to a knee. I'm constantly telling people, don't push yourself past the spot. And we're wearing a heart monitor. Remember I told you about the dynamic resistance as you're moving? Mm -hmm. The heart monitor is going to go from your chest to your phone which your phone goes to your TV. Like mm. when I built platforms for this, I built it on all platforms. Looking back, it would have cost me a lot less if I just focused on the phone. Because the phone, if you got any kind of, you know, most TVs have them already, but if you have an iPhone, Apple TV, or if it's Chrome, you've got Chromecast, the phone goes right to the TV. So whatever's on the phone is going to end up on the TV. And my heart rate's going to end up on your, your uh, device. Mm. At the end of the workout, it's going to tell you how long, how much time, percentage of time were you spending not in the zone, in the zone, over the zone, in the anaerobic zone. It's going to tell you how many calories you burn, which is a great way to inspire people wow, I burned 527 calories. Man, I would never thought I could do it. Not running. No impact. <laughs> so I can prove that the program is kick-ass cardio. I can prove that it breaks up scar tissue, alleviates pain, and creates mobility. I can prove just holding my foot up here, <laughs> core strength at a different level with minimal joint impact. And I would say no impact but my lawyer made me say minimal because <laughs> <laughs> there's a slightest degree. I'm of like, course. all right, I'll call it minimal, you know, but how do you, how do you works. address uh, scar tissue? So if you're like, so I got scar tissue between my, behind my knees, I have some osteophytes sure. that are built up. Now, are you, do you recommend going into pain if as like, how much pain do you feel like you should be enduring is the more pain, the better. And then you're going to see more results or what do you, what do you feel <clears> like? The best way to handle it. I that. believe in pain means pain. Don't do that. Discomfort, which is what you're calling pain right there. Yeah. Like 
your level of discomfort might be someone, oh my God, you know what yeah. I mean? Because you're, yeah. you know how to work through that. To me, it's like, if it's a sharp pain, stop doing that. Like, you know, the old thing, no pain, no gain, really for normal people, not UFC fighters or guys who, you know, who, who beat their body up for a living, but no pain, no gain pretty much ends around 25. Yeah. After that, pain means pain. Don't do that. Now, being uncomfortable, breaking up scar tissue, that's uncomfortable. Get surgery. The first thing you're going to have to do, because you can't even lift your shoulder past here, you got to walk it up the wall, and damn, that is uncomfortable. And you're walking down, you're walking down, before you know you can do that. Before you know it, you can do that. Oh, my God, I'm up to here. Then all of a sudden, you can do this. You know, like, yeah, yeah. You, you have to break up the scar tissue. Like I told you, a lot of my guys can't raise their arms. My wrestlers, guys with buddies of mine, can't lift past the air. Because at one point, they just stopped. Their body said they couldn't do it, so they didn't do it. That's when they should have pushed through. And maybe they could have got to here. You know, but maybe that would have been it. But you'll know, because it won't go any farther. But if you keep working on it, at some point, what I've found, especially when I make people take six pictures, it's front, side, fold forward. And the last one's like, pick your foot up. Can you hold your calf? Can you hold your knee? Can you hold your foot in here? Well, where are you? Because if you keep working the program, you're going to eventually be able to do this. And if I got disabled, disabled veteran, Arthur Borman, to be able to do it, I know anybody can do it. And one of the things that, um, again, those six pictures, it's so important to take the pictures because you don't really remember where you were. Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You, know, yeah. you, you don't really remember the spot you started at and you'll think, well, I haven't been making much gains. So let me just show you this guy right here. And this is Arthur Borman. This is the disabled vet that I helped walk the video that had yeah. Yeah. You know, millions 99 of views. million, I think 99 million <laughs> views. If you haven't seen it yet and you want to feel inspired, go check it out. Arthur Borman, DDPY. Yeah, and, and, is that what you type he, in? Yeah. Well, if you, if you put up, uh, if you go just put up Arthur Borman on YouTube, you can watch this video. This is Arthur day one. All right. He's got knee braces, back brace, and wrap around canes. He has not walked without these canes at this point in 15 years. He was told he will never, by his doctors, be able to walk like stop trying, stop setting yourself up to fail. That's what they told him. This is day one. This is 10 months later. That's insane. From that guy, look at his physiology there. Look at his physiology there. Now, that's, that's great that he lost 140 pounds, you know, in 10 months. But this is even greater, that he went from that guy, look at the, he's holding himself up by the cane, because if not, he'll just fall down. Not anymore. Mm. From that guy, you think there's scar tissue there? Yeah. What happened to it? It broke yeah. it up. This is phenomenal. His son yeah. holding him. I'm like, Arthur, why is your son holding you? Because I'll fall. Again, not anymore. Let's go back to where he was. Even got a haircut. <clears throat> think, uh, right? <laughs> think, think he had scar tissue in those knees? Think <laughs> he broke it up there? But this is the one. He, he can't stand on one leg or two legs. How am I going to get him to stand on one leg? That's how. Wow. Now, this is something that's not in the video. You can see those pictures and you'll still cry if you watch the video. Mm. <clears throat> and we've got We've tracked it on so many different sites that there's over a half a billion views on this video. Now, this is the one I'm about to show you isn't the video on the video. In 10 months, he loses 140 pounds. More importantly, he lost the knee braces, back brace, and cage, not just to walk, but run. On his one year anniversary, he's 5'6. He took a picture with his six foot two son. Wow. That's wow. a different level, of course. Wow, Trey. holding his brother. I mean, his son, yeah. that's insane. Holding his son up. 
Who's what? six two? Now, what? How how <laughs> often was he doing the workouts? What was he was he every doing day. anything different? Was he just doing every exactly, day, just once a day? He, every, no, he started with once, and then I told him you should start doing two a days. Back then, he was doing twenty or thirty minute workouts in the beginning, and um, two a days would be like I said, do one, you know, one in the morning, and then do like once or twice a week, do it two a day. He went to five nights a week immediately, every morning. Then he went to seven and seven, seven mornings, seven nights. Got to remember what this guy's motivation was. He wanted to walk again. Mm. That's a big deal. You want to fight again. Yeah. He just wanted to walk. Yeah. You know, without the aid of canes. Ugh. And uh, 10 months later, he's running. Now, I told him, stop that. You know, run because you want to show you can and then stop that because that's going to beat the hell out of your knees even more. Yeah. And your hips and your back. You know, you don't do stuff that beats you up. Like, I don't golf, but I think it would be fun to learn. But twisting one way every time with my back, I've got no L4, L5 disc. Zero. I figured out a way to create this. I'm just not lifting. I'm really stretching. When I put both forward, I'm really stretching, but stretching and strengthening and building these little muscles that come around these vertebrae. And people can say, I don't know how you do it. Well, all I know is it works. Yeah. You know what? That's let, let me uh let me ask you, can you go into I mean your your story? So you break your back from your low points to you figuring it out, getting back on your feet again and realizing you do have a future. Can you just go through what that was like? Well, when I first did it, and again, this looks like the worst thing ever happened to me. I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal. But that's if I wrestle. If I don't wrestle, in 90 days, they can get rid of me. Oh. That's all it takes, 90 days. It's not worth the contract it's written on. So I know they're going to give me at least six months, you know, before they do anything because I've got a great relationship. But I know if I don't get back there again, you got to remember, I'm 42 years old at the time. I'm about to be 43. Like where your clock's ticking there at 37, I'm 42, almost 43. And the first couple of days, I just wallowed in my misery, poor me, why me? And that's not the way I think, you know, everybody goes down the rock, Obama, you know, Trump, Brady, LeBron, Oprah, everybody goes down. They just don't stay there. So right away, within the first couple of days, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I have no idea at the time. But my wife, Kimberly, at the time was like, baby, you should really try yoga. And the first words out of my mouth are, fuck that. I'm not doing yoga. (laughs) And that's where she started it on me. Like, you're the first guy to ice his body, to do chiropractic, do plant kinesiology, you do acupuncture, you do cupping, you do all these things. But you are so pigheaded that you won't try yoga. (sighs) And I was like. All right, show me a tape. Back then, it was VHS tape. And the first two she showed me, I go, I'm not doing that. And then she came across a guy named Brian Kest. And Brian, who is now one of my buddies, you know, he, he's, a, he's a tough son of a bitch from Detroit who is a yogi, but he's a cool dude, you know? And I could sort of like, okay, he had a form of power yoga. And it was really good. Uh, I couldn't do any of it, though. And it, now today, when Brian teaches, he teaches it with modified positions. But back then, there were no modified positions. And, of course, Kimberly can do all that shit. Yeah. I can't do any of it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is so frustrating for guys. Yeah. So I started to figure out the modifications. Again, you put me around something, I'm going to figure it out. Especially if it's my body. If I'm working with someone... Who's crippled up? If I can just get in front of him and I can see what he can do, I'll show him how to use the chair so he can get up and get down again. 
which he hasn't done probably in 15 years. I'll show him how to turn all that shit on. Mm. And so I started to figure out modifications and I'm doing it every day, but I'm only doing it 20 minutes at a time, but I'm doing it at that point in the beginning two days, two times a day. I went to three times a day. Yo, just starting at night. I do front the bed. Wait, do two, three times up. a day for 20 minutes. About, you were doing about 20 minutes. Yeah. Cause I couldn't go much longer than that. Cause my back was killing me. Then I'm going right to icing my back, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so again, I have one job. Get back in the ring. That, I got one job. I got yeah. one goal. And cause I was at the peak of, of my game. And over that period in 1997 and 98, I was one of the top guys in the world. I didn't get paid like that, though. Mm. I got paid chunk money because I just, once I signed that contract, my thing blew up. And I could have re-signed somewhere in the middle and renegotiated. But I wanted to have the real power at the end yeah. where I get exactly what I wanted. And I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's gonna now I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> so uh, so within three weeks, within three weeks, Chris, I felt a significant difference. And I was like, this shit's helping me. Now at the same time, I'm doing rehab for my back. I'm going to that freaking place, going in there, whatever little exercises they had me do, I did them. And then one night, now I know all that shit. I don't even have to go there anymore. I can do it at home. Now, up to this point, I've rehabbed both shoulders, surgeries, and both knees. So I know a lot about rehab and breaking up scar tissue. One night, I mix the rehabilitation techniques with the yoga. And I was like, wow, that shit flows good. And God, I can go right from this. When I get too tired here, I can go to this. Yeah, I, go to, I go from being standing down to on my knees. Yeah, I, I would mix shit up. And then I wasn't lifting any weights, you know, and I was 255 back then. And it was all right here <laughs> on yeah. my shoulders and chest. And uh, um, so I started doing a three-second lower, three-second hold, three-second up. And I had to do it on my knees in wow. the beginning. Eventually, I got off my knees. And eventually, those three-second push-ups became five-second push-ups. Now, the crazy part was, you're engaging when you're doing those slow burn push-ups. So about two months in, I'm feeling like I'm turning a corner here. I'm going to start doing cardio because, and even though I was sweating my ass off, I didn't have a heart monitor on me. I didn't know I was doing cardio with certain parts. I start sweating my ass off. So I got up on the Stairmaster and I understand heart rate, meaning that if you're injured, if you're, I use Dr. Phil Mathetone's theory of your age less. So if you're 42, less 180, that's 138, right? Now drop 20 clicks, 138 to 118. That's your fat burden zone. Your higher end is going to be 135, 136, 37, 138. Now, if you're injured, drop another five to 10 clicks. So I'm not going over 133 clicks I've got my heart monitor on my wrist, not on my app, because there is no app. Yeah. And I'm not going over 133. I get off the treadmill, our Stairmaster. I get on the uh, on the mat. I start doing my shit. I'm in, uh, doing a 10-second push-up by this time. When I push up in the Cobra, I go to down dog and step up. I look at my heart monitor and it says 128. I'm like, how the hell is my heart rate this high? And I'm going in the warrior position. And I just, out of nowhere, decide I'm grabbing cables. And I start pulling in three, two, one. And I'm looking at my heart monitor here. And I'm watching it go. 112, 113, 114, 117, 118, let go. 115, 112. 111, engage. And that's where I started to do this shit. Mm. And next thing I know, I'm getting like, wow, now I've developed no impact in getting a kick-ass cardiovascular workout. When I went back to see my doctor, who also 
was the doctor that they they were sending out a doctor from Lloyd's of London because I had one of those million dollar policies, right? And my doctor was blown away what I did in three months, just under three months. That doctor came down because I wanted to resign me up <laughs> on that Lloyd's of London policy. And uh, they pushed it through and they couldn't believe how good I was. Now, it still hurt. It wasn't like I was I was fixed. It was just, it was a fix to keep going. And I found that I had to keep doing it. When I would go to TV, I'd check in. But, but at the time I got to where I was feeling good enough to get back in the ring, I was three hours a day. Fucking my program on the mat. Now, did I do three hours straight? No. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd do an hour to hour and 15. Later on in the day, I'd do 45. If I had you know, TV, I'd walk in, put my shit down, roll my mat out, and do an hour to hour and 15 minute workout. Then I'd go get something to eat. I'd go find out who I'm wrestling. I'd freaking come back for another 45. Now I want to do take a hot shower. I got to work on my interviews. I'm going to take a hot shower, come back, put on my gear. Now I'm in my gear. I'm going to do 20 minutes. Now I'm warmed up. I'm ready to go. I'm not wrestling for another three hours. And I just freaking do what I got to do. Hit the mat again. Before I know it, I'm doing another 10 minutes before as I'm hearing my music play. And I'm up, ready to go. And that's how I did it. Anytime. I was doing TV. If I was just wrestling, I'd do it for about an hour after I took a hot shower and walk right to the ring. <laughs> mm. You know, so I was, your body has to be warm. And why you see so many guys, athletes, when they're running down the field as hard as they can, they pull their hamstring because they don't do any of this. They stretch. Stretching is not what I do. Stretching is a piece of what I do. And with the flexing and engaging, you're stretching and strengthening the muscles, ligaments, and tendons. And again, it's why at 65, and when I'm 70, I'm going to be doing the same shit. And when I'm 75, I'm going to be doing the same shit. And when I'm 80 and people are just going to be going, holy fuck, how is old? He's just a freak. It's like, no, I put the work in. You know, and when you're fucking injured, if, the, if you're smart enough, to friggin' do what I'm telling you to do before you get injured. Your chance of injury just completely dropped dramatically. Now, could you still get hurt? Absolutely. You know, the shit's rough. It's a rough game, whether it's professional football or MMA or professional wrestling or NBA for that matter. Those guys on their knees and their back, jumping and turning and twisting and jumping and turning and twisting and flipping and falling. And, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a brutal game, man. And, you know, I couldn't believe they let me play basketball. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, you know, but I was like, fuck it. Okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I got to do this. What do, you, what do you recommend for me? To, I, obviously, my leg is shot. I don't have much meniscus left in my knee. They had to put a rod through through my knee joint, so they beat up the knee even more. Going putting that rod through the knee and then into the tibia uh, bone. How many days a week and for how long do you feel like I need to get started? I also want to be able to do a split. That's something I've been working on. Is that something that could be incorporated? What, what I, yeah. Well, what I want to do first, I want to see pictures of you, where you are, and you know where where your body is at. We can get you started, and then you should come out here and spend like two days with me. Like, it's really, it's Monday. You, you come out, we work out that day, we hang out. I show you how we eat because you really should be eating like that. And again, Tom Brady, one word, just put it like that. Yeah. He eats the exact same way I do. Um, and, uh, and then the next day, we work out again, and then you fly home. You know? But, Where are you, you know, at? You're in do... Georgia? Yeah, I'm in Georgia. Nice. Where are you? I'm in, I'm in South yeah. Carolina. So I come from God. You could drive. Yeah, I pretty much. Yeah. I was just in Hilton Head, which I know is right next to uh, Georgia. Yeah, sure. Yeah, where, you're, you're, where are you you're, at in Georgia? Atlanta. You're probably four okay. hours from me max. Gotcha. You know, unless you're northern South Carolina. Uh, by Charlotte. Um, right by Charlotte. Okay, so you're like you're like four hours. Yeah, yeah. four hours. It's a, it's 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 an easy drive. 
You come in, we'll friggin' work out. We'll friggin', I can do that pretty much anytime. If you're just going to come in for a day and, you know, I can, I can figure that out in the next couple of weeks. We could find it and come in and then I'll show you where we're at and I'll show you what I'm doing with my straps so you can have them while you're working out yeah. as opposed to have to stop and go over and set yourself up on that. I'm sure mm -hmm. that's a pretty elaborate machine because a lot of that BFR stuff is really expensive. You Super know, expensive. Um, Thank God the insurance but, company uh, took care of it for me, but that's friggin' it's expensive. Awesome, yeah. 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 I the think guy the who developed that, yeah, no, developed I was, that was a Japanese doctor and he, it's all, those things are all about rehab. Yeah. Um, I mean, they have all these studies that came out that are just showing that people are coming back so much faster than they would have if they weren't using the BFR. Um, and I could feel it, man. I mean, it's painful. It's hard to do, especially when you have the trauma in the leg. Um, but right. I know it's making a difference because without without struggle, it's hard to believe like anything is really working. I'm super skeptical. <laughs> you know, that's why I love ice baths. I love saunas uh, and I love BFR. I just because you feel the struggle. And I just think good things don't come easy. Good things come oh, with hard don't. work and struggle. And no, so they don't. like when you do all these different things where, you know, you go to the physical therapy places and they'll, uh, you know, I've done everything. Um, I don't really see that much results from much other than those three things. Well, the biggest thing that I get into every single morning and there's no struggle at all, it's just expensive. <laughs> uh, is I have a, have you, uh, no, oh, you'll see it. Okay. When, you'll see it when you come here. I have a, uh, a hyperbaric. I have two of them, hyperbaric chambers, and I've had the one originally, um, and it's twelve psi. But it was a makeshift one, and my brother came across one. It's like sixty-seven thousand bucks, but it's fifteen psi, and it's from Austria. And I would never turn people on to the first one I got. Like this one, though, I would tell anyone and everyone who could afford it. If you are in combat sports, you absolutely should have a chamber because the chamber is not just going to, let's call, talk about PSI, pounds per square inch. When you're in a, a tube is what you're in. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't have hard glass tubes because they're just at the Mayo Clinic, all right? And they go above 15 PSI, but at 12 PSI, it's not just oxidizing your blood to help you heal faster. At 12 PSI, you break the brain blood barrier, which is huge for us. It takes the air, oxygen up into your brain and starts healing that. And the best example I can give to that, just this last Sunday, two days ago, um, Daniel Bryan, whose real name is Brian Danielson, he showed up at AEW. Now, he was the most over good guy, babyface in the business probably about six years ago. World champ, friggin' not a big guy at all, but just people love him because of his energy, his work ethic. And I mean, they love him. And they ended his career because of too many dark spots on his brain. Now, just to segue, when Chris Benoit killed his family, I knew Chris pretty well. He was not that guy. That was something that was fucked up. Yeah. When he killed himself, the family, his father gave his brain to um, Chris Kowinski, who is a Harvard doctor that was well, also a wrestler. That all he works is on brain trauma. Chris had the brain of an 87-year-old Alzheimer patient. He was 40. Right? Gosh. So um, um, I'm just going to call him his real name now, Brian Danielson. Uh, that's the name he's going by now. He, I, I saw him two years later, and he was back in the ring. So I was at WrestleMania. I went by to see him. And I go, so, Ryan, how'd you do this? How'd you get back? And he started to say, he said, hyperbaric chamber. He said, how'd you know? I said, because I've got one. <laughs> he said, I said, how did you get your brain to heal like that, though? He said, every morning 
and every night, an hour to an hour and a half. And that's what he did for two straight years. Wow. And it will help heal. It's kind of like cigarettes. Stop smoking and your lungs will clear up. You know, your liver, if you haven't destroyed it, stop drinking, it'll clear up. Well, your brain's not going to clear up. But if you can put oxygen on it, and what they've found, you know, and again, this isn't something <clears throat> you're ever going to see wide stream in the United States because there's no money involved. Mm, like everything you know, there's else. There's no money. Right. There has to be a prescription. There has to be some absorbent prescription they got to give you, which I hope other people will listen to it too. Every time you see this new miracle drug that's coming out, and the flowery music and the beautiful people, and this will heal your hands and make you feel great for the first 15 seconds. And then for the next 45 seconds, it's going to tell you, you could go blind. You could go crazy. You could lose your freaking, you could go impudent. You could do all the shit that makes you go, what? But it's such flowery and this could happen and that could happen. But, you know, talk to your doctor. And it's for free. You know, yeah. And you don't have to pay for but, it. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's the whole that this is something that when you have it, you have it. Now you got to maintain it. But after that, like I just had my brain tested all the way through and my brain's in really good shape. I've been going in a hyperbaric chamber for the last three years. Mm. Did so you I have, didn't do it? You didn't do anything before to figure, see the base? I did it. I was pissed that I didn't. But I'll tell you one thing. I've also started doing every week. I do a vitamin drip. IV bag yep. with, with the highest amount of C, vitamin C you can put in, and glutathione. And I do NAD. And What's NAD? NAD? It's too long for me to tell. It's like 17 letters per word. But NAD is the great brain healer. And it clears the fog in your brain. Look it up. NAD, I do that Writing every other week as well. And along with all of these things, my memory is so good, man. Like, I can't even explain it, how good my, the difference. Yeah, you walk in the room, what did I come in here for? Yeah. That never happens to me anymore. And if I do, if it does, I go, oh, fuck, right. I got to get that. Or I'll get sidetracked because of my ADHD that I have. Or I'll tell one story, I go to another story, another story. I can come back to that story. 98% of the time now mm. where I couldn't do that ever. I have to say, what did I say before that? Yeah. <laughs> and I still will from time to time. Yeah. But dude, it's, it's, it's all about how you, the food you put in your body and what you do to your body, how you train and how you train your brain. And that's the biggest course. And when you come, I'll give you my book positively unstoppable because it's all about the art of owning it. Owning the story you tell yourself. And really anything's possible coming back, but there's a certain length of time that it takes to heal back. And sometimes you can't heal back from shit. You just can't. Your yeah. body's rejecting it. And a lot of that will have to do with what food you put in your body. You know, how often, like, there's times where I just, it wasn't just for, uh, um, it wasn't just for the um, stem cells and I stopped drinking. I've stopped drinking a few times and I like to have a cocktail. I'll drink a couple bottles of wine. Yeah, I'm not afraid to. But when I'm trying to do something that has to do with healing and has to do with just my body or my brain, I just stop. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you just you got it. So it's like, what do you want more? Mm. Like self. Uh, I do this thing on uh, like discipline is the greatest form of self love. You know, it's 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 putting away the instant pleasure for the bigger pleasure to come. You know, and then you decide what you really want. That's how I get people to lose hundreds of pounds. Sure, I get yeah. them to understand. And then I just get them to understand it. I don't do it for them. I just get them to understand it. And I give them a guide, like on the app, the first thing you see is called the list. Push it. 
You do the list. I guarantee you it'll change your life. I guarantee it. The list. But you got to put the work in. The list. And the list is everything from what is your why? Why did you invest in this program? And I want you to write it down and I want you to put it on your phone so you can remind yourself. Then I take you to my goal setting system, which is as an acronym is SmackDown, specific, memorable, achievable. That's important. You set a goal, it's got to be achievable. Mm -hmm. And then here's the big one, compatible. See, if it ain't compatible, it ain't achievable. And once you get your mind compatible, then you got to keep it going. You got to do it. You got to own it. You got to write it down now. And then I give you a list of things to take pictures and uh, measurements and all this shit. Because a lot of people are beat up, overweight, just down and lost hope. These are all the things that if they do it, what I'm telling them to do, as they go on this journey, they're going to see the results, which is going to build what? Confidence. Yeah. And then they're going to start to change the way they think. And then there's movies I'm going to have you watch. Like, instead of me telling people, you got to go gluten-free, dairy-free. I don't say any of that shit. I say, watch Food Inc. Watch Genetic Roulette. If you can still eat that shit after you watch those movies, then you really don't want what you think you want. Yeah. Two episodes ago, I had on a doctor named Dr. Paul Saladino. He is known as the carnivore uh, diet guy, also a.k.a. animal-based diet. You ever hear that? No, but, you know, I think there's certain people with great blood. Like, I, I'm one of those people. Like, or I'm, a, I'm a carnivore, you know, yeah. and certain blood types are like that. Yeah. And I think it's really great for people. I always tell people, you want to know what to eat? Eat organic vegetables and organic meat. Because not, and, and take out nightshades, which means shit I really love. But I can't eat them anymore. Could eat them when I was younger, but I can't eat them anymore because it just hurts me too bad. Um, tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, peppers. Like, I love that shit. But yeah. I don't eat it no more. It's yeah. like poison to me. It will attack my joints today. And I used to think it was bullshit. So, of course, I didn't eat them for a while. And then I did. And then, oh, God, my back, my knees. Like, what the fuck? It's yeah. crazy. It's what, I got what he it. actually goes into, which is something that we is not very traditional from what we learn what is good in nutrition. But basically, he goes into how vegetables have a certain toxicity le level to them, and that there's certain there's certain, every vegetable has a different level of toxicity. But what people don't know is that they are they are toxic, and there's different levels to it. Some are a little less, than, and some are more. Um, but it's just bringing awareness to the fact that like, you know, people think, you know, you're not supposed, you're just supposed to have all these vegetables and stay away from meat uh, in his diet. And what he recommends is basically anything that comes from an animal, you're good to go. So if it's up to him, it's red fatty meat as much as possible. You get all the vitamins that you possibly need from red fatty meat from, from the ass to the nose. So the liver, the, the heart, the brains and stuff like that, the, the even, even testicles, uh, you <laughs> have. and then, um, yeah. And, and vitamin D other than that, vitamin D from going outside. Other than that, you don't need any vitamin from any other source of food. And then fruit, fruit is go to, you get fruit any time of the day. So I've been doing it. I did it for 30 days. I had never felt better. The inflammation in my body was pretty much gone. You eliminated all the other shit. No alcohol. Um, yeah. yeah. All, all, the, all, all the stuff, um, you know, and I do think like, you know, I don't think that all vegetables are bad. And I also think everyone's different. I think that's no, 100%. Kind of where I always I, agree. I, I, I feel like everybody's different. I think I think gluten for pretty much everybody is probably not good. Um, no. Pastas, carbohydrates, all that stuff. I think right. too much is not good. Um, and then sugars, all processed sugars. Oh, you know, the God. big thing is it has to be grass fed. Has to be grass fed, finished. You know, if you're gonna have the eggs, it's great. You know, it's uh, the free range. You know, chicken, chickens, uh, local, lo local uh, food. You know, so it's. When they do it, it feel amazing. It's just a matter of sticking on it, sticking to it, you know. But again, what do you want? And for what you want to do, it should be your life. Yeah, I agree. While you're fight, while you're still wanting to be a fighter, it's got to be a hundred percent. 
And all you got to do is put fucking discipline all over your fucking house. And you'll see it. Like, I was reading at a third grade level when I was 30. And I just made a decision. I was 31. I'm going to be a proficient reader. And it took forever, man. But the first goal I set for myself was to read a book from cover to cover. And if I just would have said, I'm going to do this every night before I go to bed, I'm going to read one page a night. That's it. I was going to read one page, sometimes two a night. I know like any, any illiterate can do that. And I was pretty much a functional and a high level functional illiterate. I had people around me who could read shit. And I still, my girl is so smart. My girl, her name is Paige. And my real first name before I changed it to Dallas Page was Paige Joseph Walkerberg. So mm. her name is Paige. So any of my boys, you know, from from 20 years ago on, when they hear her name is Paige, they immediately burst out laughing. And then they go, and I tell them her last name temporarily now, but her last name for right now is McMahon. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, no relation. I was just so crazy. Um, but she's so smart. And so she reads like, brrr, she can read as fast as I can talk. And, and uh, so I will always have her read over everything. And I still read all the time. I've gotten so much better at it. But the first deal was to read a book from cover to cover. And like I said, if I start that and I might make it two weeks, I'm in a nightclub business back then. So I'm frigging drinking five nights a week minimum, you know? And when I wasn't drinking, I was drinking two or three beers and four or five shots. I'm not drinking tonight. You know, it's like that yeah. mode. So I'm going to read in the middle of that. And I know if I don't write it down and post those post-its all over my house, read today, there's no way I do it. At some hmm. point, life gets in the way and I get detoured. But yeah. when you got read today written everywhere and I make a promise to myself, that shit does not come down until you've read this book. Mm. Are you still and, big into are you still big into that? And are we, oh, we got to get going here, but yeah, last thing, are you still big into uh, writing things down? I'm, I've taken it to a whole different level now. Like I just don't write shit down. I set alarms. Like the reason why I knew that I was coming on here to cue you in cuz it in fucking 11:55 your alarm went off. Mm. So I'm not <laughs> going to forget. Yeah. I write a lot. There's five alarms on my phone today, you know, and there's still shit on top of that. But I've got burned into my brain, but everything as it's coming gets an alarm to remind me. And it's just, just don't think it, ink it, write it down, type it down somewhere, because that's the difference of really staying focused in on something that takes a lot of effort. Yeah. You know? Are you uh, are you a big uh, morning routine guy? You oh, I am. I, I was never a morning guy because of nightclub for so long. But Paige, she wants to be in bed by 11, 12 o'clock. Like, I almost like one or two. And mm. thank God she's helped me reset my circadian rhythm. And now I'm up like, I've been sleeping late the last two days, last two days till nine, but I'm normally up at 7 30, 8 o'clock. I wake up. If she's in a dead sleep, the, the 12 PSI, I can get in myself, uh, the chamber. I'm going right to that. And every single morning for 89 mornings in a row, I put up Duolingo and I'm studying Espanol right now. And after while you're going in the hyperbaric chamber, while I'm in the chamber, <clears throat> while I am, um, while I was in Medellin, I just fell in love with the country and the people. They were the nicest people ever. So helpful. And she could speak enough Espanol. She could used to speak it fluently, but her, her shit was down a little bit. But she still got us everywhere. But I didn't know anything. And I, like, when I was a basketball player, no, I'm not going to be the last guy picked. 
Yeah. I'm going to be picking these teams. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. learn the language. And as you get older, if you look at some of the older people that you know, and those people who do the crossword puzzles, they're 87, they're 94. They're carrying on a conversation with you like they were 46. Yeah. Keeping their because brain going. They're, exactly. You lose it. You stop losing it. You lose it. Mm. So Duolingo, there's nothing harder than learning another language, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so that's the most challenging thing for my brain. And that's what I'm doing. So yes, I'm a morning person. I have a regiment and I write down everything. But listen, look at your schedule. All right. I'll look at mine. Um, when we, when we stop this thing here, I'll give you my number. We'll text each other and figure out a way to get you out of here for, you know, for the two days and we'll work on it. And we'll get probably more towards October because September's kind of jam for me, but we'll figure it out. And let's do it. In the mean, in the meantime, don't fucking drink right now. If you're going to go to the Medellin, wherever you're going to go to get those stem cells, um, <clears throat> it depends where you're getting them and what the deal is, which we'll talk about later. And, and there's other places I can guide you too. No, that, I'm going. Uh, to, I am. I'm going to Bio Accelerator and Medellin. Okay, good. On Sunday, they're, the, yeah. they're really amazing. When mm -hmm. are you going to them? On Sunday, I'm leaving oh, on so Sunday. Going? This next week awesome. is, starts on Monday. Yeah, awesome. you know, it's a they're five day people. process. Yeah, <clears throat> you know what they're going to put you in? Hyperbaric, Hyperbaric chamber. chamber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I <That's>... heard. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, man, good. yeah. I want to ask you about that. We'll talk out more after the show yeah. because I'm very curious about that. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it, man. You're a huge inspiration to me and obviously millions of people out there. Is there any other place? I know we talked about your app, the DPY. Is there anything else that people could follow now, you on? Uh, yeah, you'd people, like if, you, if you want to just go on uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube Diamond Dallas page, where you know, we got million, million, millions of subscribers on there. But uh, my Twitter is at real DDP. My uh, my Instagram is at Diamond Dallas page. Uh, I'm always go to that page, go to that YouTube, that YouTube, that Facebook page, DDP yoga, one word. If you want to learn about my program, don't listen to a word I have to say about it. Go there. It'll blow your mind. And that's all I got, bro. So great talking to you. Great to uh, the, the hook up. And I look forward to us getting together. Thanks for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please let us know in the comments below. Won't Back Down is also available as a podcast, so feel free to give us a follow wherever you get your podcasts.